Grace and peace to you all in Jesus' name. Welcome to another Faith is Natural here on God's Heart TV. Now, today I have a message for believers. <laughs> I was recently speaking to someone on the phone and, and they actually were complaining about something to me. They said, uh, Brother Chris, last month I received prayer from you for deliverance. And yes, look, I've, I've seen some changes in my life, but even after the prayer, I still experienced these, these nightmares. And can you please pray for me again? Because, you know, the family background I'm from, I, I have serious issues in the family. There's big problems in the family that I'm from. Whew. Now, <laughs> I want to talk about this today, people of God. Now, I'm not here, first and foremost, I'm not here to say that it's, it's wrong to receive prayer multiple times over a particular issue, you know, as far as that prayer springs from faith. And I'm also not here to, to dismiss the, the reality of, of generational curses, of, of ancestral problems. But I want to address a mindset that is prevalent among many believers today. The dangerous mindsets of unnecessarily elevating the devil to a position of authority he simply does not possess. You see, people of God, one of the chief lies championed by the devil, which has sadly deceived many immature Christians today is that he still has a stronghold, a foothold in your life, even after you become a believer, after you've received your, your deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. That is a lie from the pits of hell. <sighs> but the, the evidence of how seriously this lie has infiltrated many hearts today is revealed by the common reactions of people when they face a situation that is contrary to their expectations. Let's say, for example, you receive prayer, but after the prayer, you don't experience any seemingly significant change in your circumstance in the natural. <laughs> Take notes of that, in the natural. For many people today, when this happens, they are quick to find the blame, point fingers, family background. Oh, it's that enemy. Oh, it's these supernatural forces. We are quick to point fingers at factors beyond our control. Oh, you, you don't know how, how bad that curse in my family is. You don't know how dangerous the witchcraft that's taking place in my country is. Oh, you know, I received prayer, but afterwards I had a disagreement with that man and the problem has returned. He's done something to me. We are quick to point fingers at factors beyond our control. And this is dangerous. It's dangerous because the problem with this reasoning is that it, it not only elevates the devil to a place of influence he doesn't deserve, but it also redirects responsibility away from yourself. <sighs> Look, I... I don't know today what lie the devil has peddled to try and convince you that he has rights to access your life. But one thing I do know people of God, and this is the truth. Once you are in Christ Jesus, genuinely, genuinely in Christ, the devil has no 
access to your life. Apart from the doors you open to him or the doors God permits him to enter, he has no access to your life. The truth of the matter is that the devil is a liar. He's a loser. He's a failure and he is a fraudster. The devil has been defeated and disgraced at the cross of Calvary. Colossians 2 verse 15, Hebrews 2 verse 14. He has been defeated and disgraced. No darkness can stand in the brilliance of God's light. No lie can last in the light of his truth before Christ. And those who take their stand, their position in the believer's authority, the devil is powerless. <sighs> the only power he possesses is the one you bestow upon him. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. And that's why he will never stop whispering his lies. He'll never stop strategically marketing his deception. John 8 verse 44, when the devil lies, he's speaking his native language for he is a liar. He is the father of lies. Therefore, don't legitimize his deceptive claims by your acknowledgement of them and attention to them. Quite simply, stop blaming the devil. Stop blaming the devil for your, your seeming misfortunes. Even when things, situations, circumstances go contrary to your expectations, don't blame the devil. Don't fall into the trap of magnifying the adversary above God, your heavenly father, your creator. Now, you may be listening to this message today and saying, no, but I, I don't do that. I don't magnify the devil above God. No, I've, I've never done that. <sighs> but people of God, each time you refer to your family background as the cause of your current condition. I'm still poor because, well, everyone, everyone in my family is poor. Each time you do that, you indirectly elevate the devil above God in your life. Each time you link your problem to that nightmare, after I had that attack in the dream, they began to hate me at work for no just cause. After that spiritual attack, I began to fight with my husband, fight with my wife. Each time you do that, you indirectly elevate the devil above God in your life. In the same vein, each time you solely Blame the devil's influence for your sinful actions. I can't help myself. The devil pushed me to do it. I, I've tried to change, but I just can't. Each time you do this, what's happening? You're elevating the devil above God in your life and making excuses for your wrongdoing. Let me say at this point, people of God, many people today blame the devil for entering the doors they leave wide open to him. Many blame the devil for attacking them with the ammunition they supply him. That language, that language that, oh, I, I can't help myself. I just can't help myself. That language after you've received deliverance. 
whether it's vocalized or internalized, that language is simply an expression of unwillingness to change. You know, it's, it's a common coping mechanism when dealing with the, the disappointment, the, the frustration, the pain that arises from stepping out of God's will. A common coping mechanism is to redirect responsibility away from yourself. And it may bring a, a temporary relief to dull your conscience temporarily, but it can never produce real change, real change in one's character. God, God will not come down from heaven and do for you what you must do yourself. People of God, this message is, is challenging you today to look inward. So let, let me go back to the example I said at the beginning about someone who's experiencing nightmares. Let's say you've received prayer in Jesus name, but you wake up one morning and you've just had a, a terrible nightmare. What must you do? Don't, don't be quick to conclude that, oh, uh, I've not received deliverance. The fact that you still experience an attack in your dream after prayer does not mean you are not delivered. Don't be quick to conclude that. First, take time to examine yourself. Personal reflection in the lights of God's word. Ask yourself, have I knowingly opened any door to the devil in my life? What, what was the state of my heart before I, I went to sleep? Was my heart troubled? Was my heart disturbed? Was my heart filled with, with bitterness? Is, is there any bad habits that I recognize I need to change for my relationship with? God, because people of God, God delivers us unto salvation of our souls, freedom from sin and its penalties, not the freedom to sin without consequence. It's not unto just our, our personal comfort. No, it's unto eternal enlightenments, salvation first and so if upon reflection you you recognize that that you're at fault you've taken a wrong step what do you do get back on track repent return to god run to god his grace is ever sufficient his mercy knows no bounds and if you've had that dream and, and you reflect, you check yourself, and you realize that you are on the right track in your relationship with God. Just ignore the devil. <laughs> ignore it if God has permitted it. Don't dignify the devil with the attention that he craves. No. In fact, if anything, you can begin to give thanks to God for that sign of the blessing he's about to unleash in your life. Don't Listen to that lie of the devil trying to cause you to question God's power and his goodness. Because people of God, the principle that guides us as believers, the fundamental principle that guides us is we recognize each step we take, each step we take is under the framework of divine protection and divine direction. It means God is aware. <laughs> He's in charge. He's in control. He's the divine driver. And he works all things together for good. So blaming the devil is indirectly questioning God's sovereignty and authority. In fact, Blaming the devil is coded language for unwillingness to completely surrender to God. 
if you've come to that firm conviction that your life is in God's hands, your times are in God's hands, in Him you live, in Him you move, in Him you have your being, there is simply no basis for blaming the devil. Full stop. At this point, people of God, it's time for us to pray together in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Right now, pray with me, people of God. Every lie of the devil in your life be exposed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every falsehood of the devil in your family be exposed right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every grip of demonic influence in your heart, I say be loosed, be loosed, be loosed right now. Be loosed from that grip of demonic influence. Be it in your marriage, be it in your family, be it in your career, be it in your health. Be loosed, be loosed, be loosed right now. Be released from that spirit of negativity. Be released from that spirit of confusion. Be released right now from that spirit of demonic disturbance. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever stands between your heart and total surrender to God, be removed right now. That mountain that stands between you and the fulfillment of God's promises. Be removed, be removed, be removed right now. Let freedom reign. Let joy reign. Let peace reign in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Amen.